Hey there, this is Brenda Carter. Welcome to day one of my first, duh, day one of my first vlog, um, or video log. Most of these are gonna be done in my car because I spend about a half hour to work and a half hour from work of windshield time in my car. So it's a good time to just talk about what I'm up to and what's going on and answer questions if anyone has any. First day, we're going to, um, this first one is just going to be an introduction to myself and I'm going to be honest with you, as of right now, I'm not sure 100% what I have to offer, but I'm just going to get out there and be honest and I'm not here to sell you anything. I don't know if ads are turned on my videos, but you might have to watch an ad or two. Sorry. Um, other than that, not here to sell you anything. So here is really don't allow. don't allow I don't care sorry gas buddy notification so first thing is I don't have time to edit anything so you are going to get raw footage probably about um, half hours worth at a time and so Unless I get a lot of complaints, which actually I don't really care if I get a lot of complaints. I do have a tendency to get road rage once in a while. So if you hear a F-bomb or an A-bomb or an S-bomb or some other word that you don't approve of come out of my mouth, I apologize. My road rage has been getting better since I started meditating for 10 minutes every morning. But every once in a while you get some idiot that decides to cut me off. Actually, they're not an idiot. They're a person that doesn't know any better. <laughs> Anyways, here's the history. So I started, I've always tried, been trying to run my own business, make a little extra cash more than I can make working a regular nine to five job. Um, it all started with, I bought, I bought a wholesaling course, which actually, if I went to bed such a chicken shit, um, may have worked out. It was a liquid, it was how to buy liquidations and they pretty much taught you call a whole bunch of companies, see if they have any liquidations and then you were supposed to buy them up and try to flip them to someone else who buys liquidated stuff. I had one lead, I think I called four companies, I got one lead and I never followed up. So that was like shame on me, right, for being so chicken. Um, let's see what else. I did the whole buying newspaper ads course. I never placed an ad, thank goodness. That was kind of scammy. Um, when the internet started, I did a whole kind of like a pyramid thing, but it wasn't like you get commission off of commission off of commission. It was just sell sell this course and you'll earn 200 bucks type thing. Obviously, my problem in the past was I was trying to go the easy way out. Instead of just trying to figure crap out for myself and make money and figure out where I can give value and make it work. Po po. Gotta slow down. Um, so that was my goal. Oh, I also did a lotto site, one of the free lotto sites. Once again, though, what I did was instead of starting my own or hiring a programmer or doing something like that when it was fresh and hot, I jumped in kind of on the downswing of those free lotto sites, and some guy was making the sites and leasing them for like, I don't know, 100 bucks a month, 200 a month, something like that. And then he did all the programming and all the updating and all you had to do was input the ads and you could you could play with the HTML and stuff like that. But um, once again, the whole thing was all on the downswing at the time, kind of silly. And there were probably about four or five, at least four or five other people that were leasing from the same guy. So we were 
all competing against each other for advertisers and just silly mistakes. Um, there were mistakes, but there were learning points on my part. Sorry, I gotta drink my, um, my Thrive Shake.
avoided eBay a lot of times to fulfill a drop ship, to fulfill an order, just because, especially back then, sellers weren't as honest about their listing, so um, it was one of those things that I, I tried to avoid eBay to fulfill one of those orders if I could, but if I had to, it was my last resort. Um, But another site that I found stuff on was Game Quest Direct. And I don't sell a lot of video games anymore. Once in a while I'll look and see what they have. So um those were the main ones that I would look for. Or I'd just go to Best Buy and see if they had it in stock. Um and then I knew if if someone was buying from me at my higher price that that game probably hot. So if I went to Best Buy and bought one, I would go there and buy four and then I would just jack up my, you know, make sure I was making money based upon my cost of four retail and I would sell those on eBay or Amazon. Um, so I was kind of doing retail arbitrage before Chris Green made it cool. Shame, I mean, he, he was the one that made it public and that was, that was very cool, and I didn't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known about FBA if it weren't for Chris, so, um, he is awesome, he doesn't ask for anything in return for his info, you know, you can't find a nicer guy in this business, so anyways, um, so that was 2004, 2005, I kind of read into the rules a little bit more and realized that you could pre-sell on eBay as long as you would have the item available within 30 days. So what I would do is I found a couple more wholesalers that carried newer titles and more video game, um, more video game publishers and I started pre-selling the titles. Most of the time, it was pretty safe, and I would maybe I wouldn't pre-sell it until about 20 days before it would come out, or if it was an I'd pick and choose. If it was an if it was an odd loose title, I normally wouldn't list that for pre-sale because they were notorious for pushing their um, pushing their release dates back because it was never done. It was never done. I had seen some titles go three months before they would release it. Um, usually the minute I found out that something wasn't being released on time, I would contact my customer. Um, most of the time, as long as I kept in touch with the customer, they, um, they didn't want a refund. They just wanted me to ship when the title was in stock. I know probably against eBay policy, but I kept my customer in the loop and I really didn't have a lot of that where that would happen. And then I would also pre, kind of worked with that wholesaler too, where I would list titles that I knew they had a lot of in stock, get those in my weekly shipment and ship those out when my weekly shipment of new releases came in. Um, not the best business plan. There were a lot of sleepless nights sometimes wondering when <laughs> if you know all of a sudden they had a stock out or something. So once again I'd be ordering from Amazon to fix that. And the margins for me as a small time um, small time seller from these I have a feeling I was buying from a middleman wholesaler. They weren't quite I wasn't going direct. So, my margins were very thin. So, the one year I had, I did about a hundred grand in sales. It was about 120 in sales. And I think I brought to the bottom line, and I'm not kidding, this was horrible, maybe four grand. That's 4% to the bottom line after overhead. Um, it's really 
really hard to make any money at 4%. So, after a year or two of that, I got burnt out, especially because, keep in mind, I was still working full time. Um, I did start doing used video games, which added a whole other layer of stress to my um, business because then I ended up with all of these used video games laying around my house. We tried to keep them contained, but then they had to be tested and listed, and, you know, that type of thing. And once again, I don't have a ton of time for testing. So, um, so about 2008 or 2009, I started looking for um, another way to, more ways to make money online. So I started chasing, chasing other things again, and I still had my eBay store up, but I was pretty much just sell, trying to sell what I had left in stock. Um, Which, because of my margins and because of the age of the games, a lot of trying to make money on any of that that was left was kind of crazy. On eBay, that is. We'll get to how I actually made a lot of money on that inventory. Probably on the way home because I'm only 10 minutes from work now. So I started chasing. Um, that they would write articles and put up free web pages to promote stuff on Clickbank and I made a little bit there not a ton I, the whole article thing I think it felt spammy to me so I um, I could never get my heart into doing it plus I hate writing and I really didn't want to hire someone to write the stuff for me because you get what you pay for at night. You know, outsourcing, I probably should have if I wanted to really make it work, but I think the whole thing felt spammy to me and I just didn't put my heart into it. What I did start doing at the time was I started building pages on Squidoo, which started doing very well for me. I was able to build targeted what Squidoo was doing. It had Google PageRank and, you know, they were favored by Google at the time. So, you know, if I put up a page, a targeted page, um, an example of one that I had was Nintendo DS cases. And I would write a little bit about the cases and pretty much, though, I mean, it was... It was a little bit of content, and then it was the rest was all RSS feeds that I pulled from eBay for different types of Nintendo DS cases. So I was ranking for Super Mario Nintendo DS case, Zelda DS case, um, you know those those types of things. They were very targeted, but when people got to my page, they found what they were looking for, they click, and then more than likely they would buy something from eBay. And I would make some, make a commission. And at one point in time, I was making probably, from all the Squidoo and all of the affiliate stuff I was doing, I was making about maybe 140 a month. If, if it was a really good month, like Q4, maybe 200 a month. But then after a while, the Squidoo lost their pay drink. Um... And that's the problem with using free sites to build your web properties is you're reliant on them and not the work you do. Not saying you can get Google slapped at that. The time it was the whole time if, for those that did affiliate marketing, they, you know, it was called the Google slap. And Google would look at, Google started to look at the quality of your backlinks and where they were coming from and they started to give less, um, Less authority to um, sites like Ezine articles, and they gave less authority to Squidoo. So if you had a backlink from Squidoo, you didn't get as much credit for it as if you had a backlink from oh, what's a good site? I don't know. I can't think of one right now. But you know, like. 
like a top rank site that was really good. This was right when Facebook was just coming out as well. Um, we're first starting to get popular. And let's see. So that started bringing in less money and I was figured, well, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with all this old dead stock in my room because we needed to make room. We were talking about having kids and blah, blah, blah. So, um, I found, I don't even know how I found it, but I had found Chris Green's book on retail arbitrage, which the retail arbitrage part didn't surprise me. I had done that before. I was buying Hannah Montana at Best Buy for $29.99 and flipping it for $44.99 all day, Q4, five years prior. But what I didn't know about was this thing called that Amazon called FBA. So what I started to do, I think it was a fun medical leave. Uh-oh. Cop turn his lights on. I think this is all barricaded, so he can't get me. Anyways, I was off on. Maybe. Well, I did it on the weekend, and just in case someone I work with sees this. But, um, what I did was I packed up. Uh, you know, and learned more about shipping stuff off the FBA. I packed up all the old video games and shipped them off to Amazon so they could ship them out. And come to find out, some of those video games I had in stock were worth quite a chunk of money. I sold one DS game, must have been a low print item. I sold it for $150. It was a, yeah, it was a Nintendo DS game. Um, I sold the Kingdom Hearts at that time for about 125. Um, you know, so I kind of got hooked on the whole FBA thing. So I started doing some hardcore retail arbitrage with um, some stores here in town, and that kind of carried me through for a while. And that's pretty much, well, so then in 2015, I started doing a little bit more eBay again. Because at some point, once I had my, started sending my stuff off to FBA, I closed my eBay store. And, um, in 2015, I had started thrifting and buying stuff for eBay again. And little did I know that I would end up back almost 100% on eBay in 2016 because of all of the um, brand slaps that Amazon had. I'm just not 100% comfortable sending my stuff into FBA for them anymore. I am still doing some Merchant Fulfilled with them, but most of my stuff now is thrifted garage sales and um, and I still do retail arbitrage I just think I try to get myself cheaper and I do you know if I can find a piece of clothing for a buck well even if I only go to get 10 bucks on eBay I'm still gonna make three or four dollars and it's not a most of the time, if I find one, I'm going to find brand If I find one brand new, I'm going to find ten for that price. And so I can just, you know, it's only one listing then. It's one picture. Either that or I copy the listing and use the same picture, except for maybe take a picture of the size. You know, there's just, there's a lot of opportunity. Where, whereas with Amazon, you've got to be careful and make sure you're not going to, Get um, get dinged for selling fakes, etc., etc. And that kind of brings me to where I am here. Um, I know it's kind of I started several blogs before. You know, in the past, I kind of I think what I did wrong was my voice was more I was talking down to people instead of talking with people or talking at people. Um, and, you know, I kind of almost always wanted something in return. Well, I 
been listening to Gary Vee quite a bit, and I, I'm trying to, well, yeah, I'm trying to. It's, it's a hard mindset to get out of, but, you know, I just want to help people. And if my story and what goes on in my day-to-day -day, day -day life can help people, then great. And if not, then don't watch me. But I'm here at work, and I have to go in. So, yay, it's Friday. Um, and if I think of anything else throughout the day, I will do a, um, do a vlog on the way home. Thanks. Bye.